So coming up from the superior vena cava is the right and the left brachiocephalic veins. And once they pass near the clavicles of the body, they change names into something else. And that other name would be the subclavian veins. And then branching off of the subclavian veins, going up to the head, would be the external and internal jugular veins, both right and left. So this would be the, the coronary sinus right here, and it collects venous blood from the heart. And there's three major cardiac veins on the heart. What would this one be? So this would be the great cardiac vein. It's the largest one. Wraps all the way around the heart. Next is this one. This would be the middle cardiac vein. And then this little one over here. would be the small cardiac vein. So if you open up the chambers of the heart, there is a tissue inside here lining all of them. What would be the name of the tissue? The tissue is called the endothelium, or the type of tissue is the endothelium, but it's referred to in the heart as the endocardium. And then this thick layer in here that's involved in the actual contraction of the heart, what would that be called? This would be the myocardium, and it's lining all of the chambers, mostly over on the right side. So then back on the outside of the heart, what would this tissue be called? This is the epicardium of the heart. And then the heart is, the entire heart is covered in a double walled fibrous sac, enclosing the whole thing that has three layers. So, first try to think of what that sac would be called, and then the three layers. So this would be called the pericardium of the heart. And the three layers from innermost to the outside of the heart is the visceral, parietal, and the outermost would be called the fibrous. Next we're going to be looking in here. So this hole, previously was a hole, was the fossa ovalis in a fetus, and then once the baby is born, it changes names to the foramen oval, and it separates the left and right atrium.
So this small yellow patch is a ligament called the arteriosum ligamentum. And previously in the fetus, it is known as the ductus arteriosum. It's now known as the ligamentum arteriosum. So now we're going to look at some valves, starting with this guy. This would be the tricuspid valve, or the right atrioventricular valve. And then over here, this would be the bicuspid valve, or the left atrioventricular valve. This valve is kind of hard to see. But it is right up in here. So this would be the aortic valve. The last one. Right up here. So this would be the pulmonary valve, also known as the semilunar valve. And then while we're here, um, there's four chambers of the heart. This would be the right atrium. And down from that would be the right ventricle. Moving around to the other side of the heart, left atrium and left ventricle. And then on the valves, there are little string-like things. These are known as the chordae tendinae, strings of the heart, which attach to the heart by little muscles. Little muscles are called the papillary muscles. And then there is thick ridges inside the ventricles. These are known as the trabeculae carnii. Similar tissue inside of the atrium. And this is known as the pectinate muscles. If you look, keeping in mind that there's the left atrium over here and the right atrium on the other side, there's a wall in between the two that has a specific name. And that would be the interatrial septum. And then in between the two right and left ventricles is another wall that has a specific name. And this would be the interventricular septum. Now, general anatomy of the heart, the top, which is the widest, is the base. And then this point at the bottom is the apex.